How's everybody doing? Yeah. Why y'all gonna put me behind that? Yeah. That just wasn't fair, right? Yeah, y'all know I can't come behind that. That's like me going behind Richard Pryor on some comedy, bro. <laughs> Man, it is um, awesome. Um, thank you to the P.O. Plex, uh, Dr. Denise, the University of Miami, everybody who's here, who's flown in from miles away, tickets, you know, uh, housing, transportation, just to be here at the first uh, Miami Entheogenic Conference. There we go, right? This is history. This is this is big right here. Um, the first of anything is an honor to be a part of. And that's the thing, it's always the greatest, it's always the most intimate, the most spiritual. That's why it's lower numbers, you know. In uh, five years, there's going to be thousands of people, and we're going to be like, oh, wait, is that the first one? You ain't seen Tamara in a while? Right? Right? So, no, this is really a blessing, so I give thanks for being asked to be a part of it. Um, so, today, I'll be speaking, as they said, about um, healing through the kingdoms up into the animal medicines. Um, so my history is, um, my parents was from Detroit, went to Finney High School, high school sweethearts, uh, went into the military. I, I was born in Germany, so I'm a military brother, as they call it. Um, spent some time in Colorado and was sent to live with my father around the age of 11. So I went from Colorado Springs with my mother really religious to my father, he was a street dude. So it was a, uh, conflict of interest in my brain. And after that, I went to the military. And when I came out of the military, um, I was physically as well as emotionally altered from when I went in. Um, I had actual physical ailments and things on my body that was not on my body when in. And I had things that was in my mental and my spiritual that was not there when I went in. And I started to utilize cannabis real heavy um, to the point where my supplier told me I might as well just start growing it as much as I need to. <laughs> That's what I did. I laughed and my girl was like, well, why is that funny? You should. And I was like, oh, and I did. And I became very uh, lucrative. Um, the thing of it was that in the growing, after a couple of years, I. I changed my style into organic growing because I was smoking all the weed and I was growing it and I was using chemicals to grow and I was like, wait a minute, these is going into the plants and I'm smoking. No, that's not a, a good idea. So I went organic, right? And when I did, I started to be able to hear the plants talk to me. Okay. And I became known as one of the best growers in Detroit as well as Michigan. Self-proclaimed and by others, okay? All right, Julia Marley told me I had the best weed he ever smoked on in this world, true story. So, some years later, one of my brothers, friends, and little did I know it at the time, but teachers by the name of Bob Mudu, who uh, you all might have heard speak of earlier, came to me and was like, hey, mushrooms. And I was like, what? All right, you know. And um, I ended up utilizing those mushrooms, and it set off something in me that um, I could have never seen coming. And I started to understand why I could hear the plants talking to me then. Now it's like, okay, now it's starting to make sense because I'm doing things that are not making any sense. Isn't it funny how mushrooms, when you take them, don't make no sense, but it helps you make all the sense in the world of everything you've been going through, right? And so I began utilizing them a lot. And I was still coming to, to Baba Mordo's house like, hey, I'm ready for another trip. <laughs> like, not telling him I've already been on like 10 since the last time I seen him. I'm growing my house. So like the third time I came, I was like, hey, now I gotta keep it real though. Like I've been growing them and using them and I ain't even wanna be out of protocol because I ain't been to Tamaria. I don't know how to do all the kicks and stuff. Am I supposed to be? And he was like, hey, it's okay. That was the point. It's the point in time where we want this. We want people to utilize them. You know, just honor the works. And at that point, the things that we discussed, it, it gave me comfort. 
like the sister was talking about earlier, uh, uh, Miss Vicious about, and, and, and even uh, Lucia, about safety and, and our practices, right? And he gave me a sense of safety. I ain't talking about legally, because I was growing weed, and then I'm supposed to be growing, but it made me feel safe in the practices, right? So as I began to do that, longer and longer, I, I had multiple wives at the time, and I'm going in, I'm taking her in, I'm going in, take her in, I'm going in, take her in. Now her sister wanted to go, right? She went and told her, so she come, and then her mom wanted to go, and then and it just became that I slowly but surely started to be that, shh, that guy who be taking people on the trips. You go see that. As this went on for a few years, what happened was people started to come to me for deeper healings. And it was like, okay, all right, well, I, I studied diet and nutrition, so the herbs, let's get you on some herbs. Let me study anything you come to me. I don't have to know it right there. Give me three days. The way I study, when you come back, I got a doctorate on this subject, right? So we started getting people into herbs. And the herbs were effective, but there was just some things that herbs just took too long to do, right? And I started to hear about this medicine called Cambo. Oh, Cambo, what's, what you mean, yo, what's that? Yo, it's something in the Amazon and they get it off a frog and then they like burn your skin off. This sounds real wild, what, if, where, where are we, what are we doing? No, seriously, listen. You put it on and you absorb it, and then you have the power to heal yourself like the frog do. What? Come on, man. Is this shit for real? For real? Like, no, it's, it's, it's been going on hundreds of thousands of years, and the people's is pro Oh, oh, this is something real. So then I started hearing the testimonies. I had endometriosis, killed myself with Cambo. I had herpes, killed myself with Cambo. I had um, uh, all these different. Testimonies, uh, people using it for lupus, uh, um, arthritis, right? Blood pressure. It's like, come on, like, you're naming all the things that's going on in my community. I need to be the next one with that. So I did, like, I learned, let me tell y'all something. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut real quick. I thought it was the dopest thing ever when I heard somebody say, oh, if I would come in there, shit, if you knew something he didn't, he would ask you how much to come and put on a seminar. He would send you the money. And when you get there, you ready to go to the place where all the people, he'll take you to the kitchen table. All right, go ahead and sit and start talking. Anyway. What, like where's all the people? Just me. Right? Cause now I got you one on one and I can get every tidbit. There ain't no way, wrap it up, it's time to go, no question, no, no, no. And, and if I get it, no, I'll keep going. I get that part, I already studied that, keep going with it, right? So I, I I practiced that after I heard it. Okay, it was like, oh, okay, I'm doing it. So I heard some eyes practicing camo. I'm like, yo, you train people? Yes, I need you to come and train me on that. And they did, right? And I started practicing camo. Now, for those who don't know, camo is from the back of a frog. The Father Medusa bicolor tree frog is the name of it, also known as the giant waxy tree frog. It secretes uh, this, this, this bioactive, pep, uh, filled with peptides that are bioactive in the human body. So what that means is, once it's introduced in your body, it will do the same things that it does for the frog, okay? So, um, I got trained in that, and now I had a new, like, what do you wanna say, like, I feel like I can help more people now. You get what I mean? Because it was a lot more effective. No, no, excuse me. It seemed to be more effective because it works faster. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause real quick. And I have a lecture series that I, I do that I've been traveling through America called Healing with the Kings. And what I'm going to explain to the people is that in these, in these um, speeches, these talks, is that the kingdoms that we're dealing with on the planet all have their own medicinal soldiers in it, right? Because we got things that's there for everything. Some things ain't meant for healing. Some things are meant to improve the earth. Some things is meant to keep water going somewhere, right? So, in the kingdoms, now, let me just be clear, because this is a college. 
I'm very aware that the mineral kingdom is not classified as an actual kingdom. Just for those of you scholars out here. I'm aware. So um, I speak about the mineral kingdom, the plant kingdom, the fungi kingdom, the animal kingdom, and then sometimes separated classification, the kingdom of man. The mineral kingdom is, well, minerals, right? Now, one thing about the body, it doesn't process minerals. Minerals go, okay, you eat vegetables at night, and they're filled with minerals. And those minerals go into your body and are broken down, and they have charges, electrical charges. Our body, our heart is ran by electricity. So these charges are absorbed by the body, not the minerals. The fruit we eat, that's what cleanses our body and flushes the minerals. Right? We've got the electric charges, now we need the minerals out because if we don't, we'll get toxicity. This is why they talk about uh, high mercury content, right? Or, that's the toxicity, or let's deal with the deficiency. Any women here cold right now? Huh? Any of y'all anemic? Huh? What is anemic? What do they tell you that mean? Low iron. Wouldn't iron be a mineral, right? right? So if you start to increase your iron uptake by 35 to 40 percent, are you anemic then? I don't know. See? Y'all get what I'm saying with this? Because they give us conditions and tell us that we have things and that we are things based off of a level. I'm, I, I, I'm cold. Wait a minute. I might need some iron. You give me a spinner cell. I'm not cold no more. Am I still anemic? That's just the question. I'm not here to teach. I'm here to talk. So, minerals are those building blocks that also have healing properties. Um, again, Baba Mudu had dropped on me. The I, was, I was telling him about, yeah, but you know, I've been moving around, you know, I'm feeling good talking to the brother who got me started. Yeah, you know, I'm doing talks now, you know, the healing of the kingdoms, this is this, that. He's like, what you mean? Like, yeah, you know, the mineral kingdom, the plant kingdom, the animal, this, that. He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, man, that mineral kingdom, that's right there, man. I know you're talking about the this and the that and the this and the that. And I was like, wait, hold on, let me get my pen back. Wait a minute, I didn't even realize when you start dropping them clays on me, the different colored clays on the planet and the, and the human problems. I was like, oh, I got to go and research and add this to it, right? So we got the mineral kingdom. The mineral kingdom is, 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 is again, the building blocks. So sometimes that will supplement you and you'll be to a place where you are at uh, a level that you need to be at. And sometimes these things have went further and you're not. The next kingdom from the mineral is the plant kingdom. The plant kingdom, now let's, let, let me just backtrack a little bit. Minerals, let's think of stones, right? When we get into plants, now we're having an expression of the life that is different. The plants and the molecular structure and the cellular uh, generation of the plants is faster than the minerals. So they can do a little bit something, a little bit faster, a little bit deeper. This is where we come into what most of us know as the plant. Uh, I mean, excuse me, the um, plant, yeah, plant medicines, right? The herbology. There's a lot of herbalists in here, I'm sure, right? People who deal with the herbs. Um, so I don't have to speak a whole lot on that because we know we could talk about any plant on the planet. Any disease I name, somebody's going to throw a plant out there to, to, to battle it, right? Well, let's go to the next kingdom, the fungi kingdom, which brings us here today, right? Fungi outnumbers plants. Different people say different things. I've heard everywhere from five to ten. So ten to one. So for every plant you have on this planet Earth, you got at least seven types of mushrooms. So if we can name a plant to battle any disease and fungi outnumber plants seven to one, what am I saying here? That there's probably more healing potential in fungi than there is in plants. We just have not done the science and the studies to break them down. We only have 
I can't remember the number, so I'm not gonna try to act like I got it all in there, but it's like a couple hundred, I think 400 to a thousand, that's already like named, that's already studied. That, so, right, so we have, some of y'all know in here, we got the mataki mushroom, right? Uh, the shiitake, turkey tail, right? right? These are good for the immune system, cancer fighting. How many of y'all know about the lion's mane? Lion's mane, right? Uh, he was talking about the, the, the myelin sheaf. Well, lion's mane repairs that myelin sheaf. So people who have strokes, traumatic brain injuries, this is what I give them. Um, and some of us even will mix them with the psilocybin and the niacin, right? right. So now we're crossing the blood-brain barrier, um, we are giving intelligent instructions to the lion's mane, okay, with the use of the psilocybin. So these, these fungi have great um, healing properties. Hmm. How many of you know about the cordyceps mushroom? How many of y'all know that there's two types of cordyceps? Oh, okay, all right. So there's two types. The scientists and the militaricists. Most of us will raise their hand, oh yeah, but of course that's I'm familiar with that, militaricists. But there's another one, a little bit more expensive. It's called the scientists. Let me tell y'all what Netflix taught me. That there's a chemical in the cordyceps scientists called cordyceps. It's the only place on the planet you can find this chemical. And what does the cordyceps do? It stops breast cancer cells from being able to mass size. Okay, 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 okay. How many of us heard uh, Angelina Jolie? Hmm? Mm -hmm. We heard she got a double, <laughs> right? Because she was scared of breast cancer. I didn't have it, but everybody in my family did. I don't want to get it, so I'm just going to cut these. No, here you go. Cordyceps, take a couple pills, mm. right? So fungi is a very, very powerful medicine on this planet. Now. What's the next level on the kingdoms? Animals, right? Now, what I didn't go real deep into is again when I spoke on the cells and the plants growing in one place, right? Then you got mushrooms. Mushrooms grow and they move, they walk, okay? Underground. They'll be popping up here today, next season, they like up under the ground, popping up across your neighbor's yard, like I had mushrooms last year. Yeah, they walked. When that was wrong with yours, they went over here. Yeah, they probably just used up all the nutrient bases so they moved somewhere where there was more, right? But the point I'm giving is that even though we don't think about it, mushrooms move upon this planet, but they stay connected to the planet. Now, when you get into the animal realm of things, the consciousness, the cellular genetic, all the things we talked about is higher, and they can move amongst the planet. So when I teach about healing through the kingdoms, I always say minerals, if you got a relationship problem and I give you a rose quartz, I'm not coming back next week like you got a man yet. I got you rose quartz, right? Nah, I might give her rose quartz when she goes in on her first year of college. And then four years later, she's about to graduate. I'm like, yo, what's going on with you? She's like, Oh, you won't believe it, like about a year and a half ago, I met this great dude because I was doing all this healing work and then I got to this point to be engaged, right? Like, yeah, the rose course, yeah. Now I'm feeling like that, I have something to do with that, right? Okay. Yeah, a couple years with the minerals, right? All right, well, let's go to the plants. Plant medicine, we're looking at, we're looking at a few months, y'all. Let me just be clear. I've heard of people dealing with certain things. I tried it, woo, 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 for a couple weeks, a couple weeks. It's a plan. It's gonna take some time, right? So you're looking for months. I always tell people, you ain't did at least 90 days. Don't tell me it didn't work, okay? All right, well, let's go step up to fungi. Again, this is faster, more powerful, more intelligent. Fungi? Look at that weeks. Now, don't take this as actual medical advice. Like he said, turkey tail is anti-cancerous and it takes weeks. Nah, nah, I'm giving you the idea of looking at each one of these kingdoms and how they operate, right? So when you go from the fungi kingdom to the animal medicines, animals are uh, 
consciousness. We have things that we want and that we need to do and to get, right? Um, plants and fungi, they have needs, but the consciousness of let me get up and go find it, not so much, right? Even though my spleen walks, but it's not a conscious thought as it is with a lion, like, I ain't eight weeks. That zebra looking really, yeah, I'm gonna have to run the police. Right? Right? Okay. So the consciousness is, is, is what we're utilizing when we're talking about these things. Now, going into the animal medicines, we're dealing with the camp now and back, right? We paused at the campo. I was talking about what it does. Campo is a detoxifier. It's the strongest detoxer that you can take. I heard of the duck fly. Is that the duck fly? Yeah. Listen, I ain't got no beef with the duck fly. <laughs> I, I deal with the herbs too, right? I see somebody say some like, I need the duck flower, this and that, can you tell me the proper way to use it? And I was like, yeah, use Cambo. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, why do I say that? Because Cambo is a, oh, remember plants? When, once you put that plant in there, what is it, 24 hours you're purging and, and defecating? You know what I mean? I'll do Cambo, boop. 13 minutes, the song play, right? I'm done, I'm purged, and now my body will release naturally. And the medicine is still with me for three to six months. During COVID, as a medicine man, people would call me and they'd be like, I got COVID, man. I'm leaving the hospital. I said, come on over. And they'll come in and they'll walk in. I'm like, yo, take the mask off, son. It's a place of healing. Yeah, but I got COVID. You ain't worried you're going to get it. If I'm worried that I'm going to get it, you probably shouldn't be here, right? <laughs> I think I'm lying to you, right? I'm in the doctor, you're like, hey, no, it's not going to change. Why are you putting that mask on? Like, oh, what's going on, right? So, so with that being said, this is how we protected ourselves from COVID. We took Cambo. Everybody else sheltered in place, and the PAD, Psychonaut Academy of Detroit, was deeper with people than it has ever been. I have more people in there on a daily basis during COVID than I ever had before, okay? So I'm trying to give you an idea, and I don't recall anybody who was part of that getting COVID, mm. right? It's a few people in here who was part of that. Anybody remember anybody getting COVID? Don't let me stand up there a lot of these people, okay? <laughs> Right? So this was the healing and the protection. Now, this is what I meant when I said, yeah, I'm feeling good. I can help more people. And this sister hit me in my inbox and she was like, hey, I've been following you and I've been seeing that you got the medicines and this and that. Can you help my mama? I'm like, oh, what she got? And it was some form of cancer. Uh, uh, no. Nah. And a couple months later, her mother passed on. And I knew that there was nothing like, eh, ain't nothing to do with me. But I felt bad. I felt bad because it's like you tell other people that, you know what I'm saying, they got hell in this and snap, but you can only deal with a certain amount of things around that time. And we have heard of the snake venoms previous to. But we heard about it as a practice, as something that goes on. You just hear about it, like we hear about it a lot, right? So, but around this time, um, more more talks started coming, and I'm like, yo, what what is what is this snake venom medicine? And um, just like before, as soon as I was aware of somebody who practiced it, I'm like, hey, how much does it cost to get you here? It was coming in from Mexico and they gave me the price and lodging and all of these things. And I was like, done. And I got them here and I got me and a few of my other fellow brothers trained in snake venom medicines. Snake venom medicines, the brother was breaking down the cobra and the feeding of the cobra. He was breaking down the reptilian brain. He was breaking down the beginning of, or part of, uh, the lineage of humans, period, and it stretches back to the serpent. Even when you go into the religious texts, 
the Adam and Eve, the serpent was there. It's always been present. And it's always been utilized by the wise people as a form of healing. Okay? So, of course, these things are hidden. Right? Like the stories of Gilgamesh. Or whatever else that, if you are wise or a study person, you might have heard of. And if not, you're going, yo, who the hell is Gilgamesh? Just going to ask him later. I don't know. Right? Same thing with the venoms. But why should something that can be utilized... To heal us, be secret, right? Because in this day and age, healing is a business, period. So the snake heals its prey before it kills its prey. It ain't got no limbs to be able to tear across and pull out what's negative and leave it, right? And eat what's good. Gotta eat the whole thing. So what if it's filled with all type of disgustingness, tumors, pus, you know, all of these growths? What am I gonna just eat that? It's cool. Nah. When I envenomate my prey, the first thing that's gonna happen is that a lot of the red blood cells gonna turn to white blood cells or T cells. It's the college. Y'all know what them is. The healing cells, which floods your body immediately with healing, like literally the healing starts right then and there. And then of course it melts your liver or your heart or your lungs and you can't walk, breathe, or move, your muscles melt and then I can eat you, all right? But now, this is self-style wisdom. I don't know what I'm about to say if it's true or not, okay? But in my mind, I'm saying, wait a minute, so the indigenous people been using this cambo for years. And then my man brought it to America and they started studying it and synthesizing the different proteins and peptides to create synthetic versions that they can use or sell. And I'm saying that I think that somebody outside of that was sitting going, well, well if we can use the frog secretion, why we can't use the snake the same way? And of course, I was like, because this stuff is like at a rate where it's safe. That is way too strong. And he was like, well, let's do what we do to everything. Alchemize it to a rate that is not that strong. Put the cut on it. Right? <laughs> And then we can absorb it the same way. Mm -hmm. Now, let's be clear. Whoever those frontiers, the pioneers was, were some brave people. Because me having to come into my own trials and tribulations with the same thing, I had to start utilizing these venoms before I could put them on anybody else. Mm -hmm. And I'll come into a situation where it was like, oh, no, it's too strong. And uh, I was scared. <laughs> to say the least. The side effects were not good. But I'm all right now, right? We got the rates right, right? <laughs> when Jay-Z said, I went through this, so you wouldn't have to go through this, right? <laughs> oh, did that, so you won't have to go through that. <laughs> so, all right, so what do these venoms do? As far as I'm concerned, everything. We just got to find the right venom for the right L. You got coagulants, you got uh, uh, anticoagulants, right? You have things that higher your blood pressure, you have things that lower your blood pressure, you things things that kill cells, have things that regenerate cells. Nerve growth factor is one of the peptides in snake venom. It's a nerve growth factor, you know, right? So this is what we're talking about, the plant medicine and the fungi medicine. Remember we talked about traumatic brain injuries and the rebuilding of the myelin sheath, right? Um, this is nerve growth. So the nerve growth factor and the snake venom assist with that. But the snake venom is more what? Potent, more quicker to work. So you have anti-tumor um, properties in some of the venoms. You have anti-cancer properties in some of the venoms. You have anti 
uh, parasitic, right? So this do so many different things. So how do we utilize it? Yeah, same way as the camo, you get the stick, a couple burns on your skin, that crazy stuff I was talking about, right? Rub that flesh off, it opens up white gates. You apply the medicine and allow your body to absorb it into your lymphatic system where it moves it throughout your body. Now, we also utilize what's known as traditional Chinese medicine, meridian points on the body to send the medicine. So I think uh, I was with the baby, I had to step out for a second, but I think the queen told you all the story of the multiple myeloma uh, patient we had. She had three forms of cancer, uh, blood cancer, breast cancer, and lung cancer previous, and beat them all with chemo and radiation. And when they told her last year that she has multiple myeloma stage two bone cancer, she said, I will self-medicate till I die on marijuana because I'm not going through the traumas of the chemo and the radiation. This is when they brought her to us and I explained her what I explained to you all now. These venoms, how they work and how we do them. And she said, I'm with it. I said, let's get started. We gave her four treatments, which is basically three administrations, three days in a row. That's one treatment. So she came three days in a row and I gave her six gates each day, 18 gates. And she left a couple weeks later, come and did it again. Left, come a couple weeks later, did it four times. And when we were done, then we gave her Cambo, which is important because I was told that when you have cancer and you do Cambo, the Cambo cleanses you so good that the things that the cancer was eating on now it no longer has it and it eats you more aggressively. So the use of Cambo would, would, would be more for eliminating of the radical cells. Once we've done so much cleaning and killing of these cells, we want to eliminate them from your body. And this is why we use the Cambo last, right? So I gave her four treatments, boom. Um, Cambo, and like she explained, she went to the doctor to get her checkup so they could monitor her and the cancer was gone. The tumor in between her 13, 14, 12, 13 rib was gone and the surgery that they had her scheduled for to remove her ribs for the rate of deterioration was no longer needed. She's at home right now laughing and joking. Yes, 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 y'all. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> all right, so watch. I'm going to tell y'all my own personal testimony with the animal medicines. I'm going to try to keep it clean, though, okay? All right. Like, wait, where are you going with this? <laughs> so when I went to military uh, overseas, the uh, Gulf War, they pumped me filled with shots. <laughs> Any veterans here? Any veterans? Y'all know about them shots, right? So when I uh, arrived in Kosovo about a month in, I went to the park, porta potty, and there was a growth on um, Jimmy, as they refer to, right? And I was like, wait, hold on, like, I'm invested in condoms. It couldn't be, <laughs> right? And I go to the people, and they're like, it's not one of those. It's a skin tag. And I'm like, well, tag somebody else. I don't want to be here. This is not cool. It's like, no, it's, it's just the growth of skin. It's abnormal, but you'll be okay. Like, this is not okay. This is bad for business. <laughs> can we do anything to, you know, remove it? She said, we can freeze it off with nitrogen. I'm like, yo, go get the nitrogen. She said, hold on. We can't control how deep the nitrogen go. So there is a possibility that we could accidentally hit one of the nerves and Jimmy won't work no more. I'm oh, like, wait a minute. Have a beautiful Jimmy that don't work or something to talk about. I, I'm a good conversation with this. Never mind. This was at 19 years old and I <laughs> was promiscuous. So I had to have a lot of conversations over 20 years. Imagine how nervous I was when I didn't have to have a conversation. You might have to ask me no question. No, I'm not, never mind. I'm good. I'm good. No. Right? All right. So I get trained in Cambo, and it's day one for us to do the Cambo on ourselves, right? No, to get our first Cambo treatment. She gives me my first Cambo doc, which all my gates be disappearing. For some reason, that one has never went nowhere. Bow, right there. One gate. It was about 3 o'clock, and I rolled in the grass, throwing up. Ugh, like, so dramatic, right? 
And then 13 minutes later, it was over. And now we go on about our day and we're gonna meet tomorrow so we can do some more medicine work. So I go to bed and I wake up the next morning and I get in the shower. I'm taking a shower and I get to doing like this because I can't find my skin tag. It's not on there no more. It's not in the morning, y'all. This ain't even 24 hours. A growth that's been there for 20 years. One day to Cambo. 12 hours later, completely gone. Yeah, no traces of it, no, well the skin looked like it was something here before, nothing, nothing. That was my cambo. Couple years later, I'm introduced and trained in the snake venoms. My teacher was no longer available to me the venoms were no longer available to me, and I found a lump on my testicle. And I'm like, well, hold on, I've been telling everybody, snake venom is natural. Chemotherapy is the synthetic version of that. So in my mind, I know what I need right now. Hence the conversation about me having to go and find the venoms and learn how to mixing myself because I need to get rid of this lump. So, copperhead venom, anti-tumor. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a hold of a copperhead. We uh, got everything alchemized right. And I gave myself two treatments of snake venom. And it eliminated it within one month. Mm -hmm. And I might have been quicker, but I was scared to look. Like after I had found it, I didn't want to check no more. So when I started doing it, it was like, all right, like I, I'm, because I'm like, oh, I did two treatments. Let me check now, it was a month later, to see if I need to do more treatments. And there was nothing. And that was like, I think about a year ago, right? So I have my own testimonies. I have had multiple clients with tumors, breasts. Um, I've had a couple other fellas who had some growths. Uh, one of them, he didn't even tell me that when he came to me. He was telling me about his addict addiction to all these other things. And um, somehow he decided on the snake venoms. And so he got two treatments. And like three or four days went by and he didn't come. He was like, well, you got to get your third one. So finally he contacted me. He shows up. I'm like, man, man you know what I'm saying? Where you been? This and this and that. He was like, hey, bro, I got to tell you something. I'm like, what? He was like, uh, I know I told you about my addictions and all of that, but I ain't tell you I had a lump. You know, on my test was I'm like, oh, oh, well, she, well, we doing the right thing. He said, I know, cause it's gone. Mm -hmm. I said, what? Already? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's gone. Mm -hmm. like, bro, you ain't even get your third trip. That was like four or five days. All right. So I have multiple testimonies. So I'm here to just kind of explain that these animals, scorpions, the venomous scorpions. Mm -hmm. How many y'all knew platypuses? were venomous. What? Yeah. Okay, we got some hands out here. Yeah, a platypus. Yeah, right? I mean, if you look like that, you ain't carrying a gun to school. <laughs> right? So these different venoms have properties within them. Keep in mind, we are all made up of the same thing, y'all. We are one. Like, when you look at your body, and we know you got skin cell, you got little, what they call it, mites on you. If you look up under the microscope, you're gonna see a little microscopic life on your body, right? We're the microscopic life of Earth. We're the same thing. We are the same thing. So if you wanna heal yourself, you heal yourself with the planet, through the kingdoms. All right, what about that last kingdom? Man. All right, what's, what's, what will be to the healing kingdoms of man? Anybody? Religion. Mm. <laughs> That's a system. I'm actually looking. Okay, how about there's no Reiki practitioners here? That's why she ran up. Huh? Reiki practitioners is human medicine. Where are my prayer warriors at? Hello. Up oh, human medicine, right? Uh, yoga. Medit meditation. Human medicine. One of my favorite ones. 
And I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this word, some don't like the word, but you call it what you want. My favorite human medicine of all is the placebo. Huh? The power of belief, right? Because as I say, like each one of these levels that you go up in the heaven and the kingdoms, the mineral to the plant, you just got stronger or more effective. The plant to the fungi, you just got stronger, more effective. The fungi to the animal, stronger, more effective. Animal to man. So that means that you can have an illness and I can give you 10 minerals, six plants, three fungi, two animal medicines, and you go home and say, this old medicine man on some bullshit. He gave me a bunch of twigs and animal. It ain't gonna fix nothing. And immediately reverse your healing. But what else does that mean? If you don't have the ability and the power to get plants, fungi, mineral, and animals, what do you have all the time? You, you, you are your number one medicine. You are your greatest medicine man or woman. You are. And everybody here, this is what we're talking about with what we're calling the entheogens is the things that assist us to make sure our medicine is alchemized correctly for us, right? You're doing these mushrooms to heal your mind and your emotions because that's where everything else comes from. You angry. You can't heal angry. You hurt. It's hard to heal why you hurt. Right? That's why I get you morphine. It'll calm you down. The healing can take more place because as long as it hurt, you have what? Negative thoughts and emotions towards what's going on. Right? And those negative thoughts and emotions is stronger nocebos. Because that's the opposite of placebo, apparently. Nocebo, when you're thinking negatively and you're actually degrading the power of yourself. So, I appreciate the time, the attention, and the going back and forth for me. You are a very engaged crowd, and that's important to me. And I see y'all out there, I see y'all over there. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing y'all, and I'm enjoying seeing each and every one of y'all. You know, again, thank you for making it to the first Miami conference. You want to say peace? <laughs> <laughs> One of the few words. Thank you so much.